ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರಾವನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವಾನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಾಧೀರ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಕೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ಪಂಕಜನಾಭಾಯ ನಮೋ ಪಂಕಜ ಮಾಲಿನೆ ನಮೋ ಪಂಕಜ ನೇತ್ರಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪಂಕಜಾಂಗ್ರೆ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ we reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 9 chapter 11 entitled lord ramachandra rules the world text number 16 please respond tashrutva bhagavan ramo tashrutva bhagavan ramo rundan api diyashu cha ಸ್ಮರಂ ಸ್ತುಣಾಶಕ್ನೋದ್ರೋದ್ದುಶ್ವರ ತುತ್ವಾ ಭಗವನ್ ರಾಂದನ್ನಿ ದಿಯಾಶು ಸ್ಮರಂ ಸ್ತುಣಾ ನಾಶಕ್ನೋದ್ರೋದ್ದುಶ್ವರ ತುತ್ವಾ ಭಗವನ್ ರಾಂದನ್ನಿ ದಿಯಾಶು ಸ್ಮರಂ ಸ್ತುಣಾ 
नाशक नो द्रोदुमीश्वर of Sita Devi is entering the earth. Shrutva, hearing. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ramaha, Lord Ramachandra. Rundan, trying to reject. Api, although. Diya, by intelligence. Shuchaha, grief, smaran, remembering, tasyaha, of her, gunan, qualities, tan tan, under different circumstances, na, not, ashaknod, was able, rodum, to check, Ishwaraha, although the Supreme Controller. Translation, after hearing the news of Mother Sita entering the earth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead was certainly aggrieved. Although he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, upon remembering the exalted qualities of Mother Sita, he could not check his grief in transcendental love. Purport by His Divine Grace. Shreyasi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Lord Ramchandra's grief at the news of Sita Devi entering the earth is not to be considered material. In the spiritual world also there are feelings of separation. But such feelings are considered spiritual bliss. Grief in separation exists even in the absolute. But such feelings of separation in the spiritual world are transcendentally blissful. Such feelings are a sign of Tasya Prema Vashyatva Swabhava Being under the influence of Ladini Shakti and being controlled by love. In the material world, such feelings of separation are only a perverted reflection. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Nama Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girim et kripata maham vande shri guru di natarinam paramananda madhavam shri chaitanya mishwaram namaom vishnu padaya krishna preshthaya bhutale shri mate bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pavchate De Shatarine Vanchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha 
पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद द्वैता गदाधार शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे योंत प्रवेश मम वाच मीमां प्रसुप्ता संजीवय तकिल शक्तिधरा स्वधा अन्यांशहस्तचरण श्रवणादीन प्राणनमो भगवते पुषा तोभ्यं कतांचना स्मृते युस्क सुक भवि विस्मृते विपरीत सैतन्यामित हरे कृष्णा सिख दी परमिशन एंड ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल दी असेंबल्ड वैष्णवर्स एंड वैष्णवीज महाराज सीकिंग योर परमिशन आई स्पीक समथिंग फ्रॉम द श्रीमद भागवतम फॉर द प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ माई ओन हार्ट एंड फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू एज वी आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर रामनवमी आई चोज दिस वर्स टू डिस्कस फ्रॉम नाइन इलेवन सिक्सटीन वेर लॉर्ड राम्स सेपरेशन इज बींग डिस्क्राइब्ड फ्रॉम अदर सीता Actually, I was very inspired last two days. Uh, day before yesterday, Lila Shakti Mata Ji was speaking about <clears throat> how she grew up as a child, hearing Ramayan from her father, and the whole, the community spirit of a Vedic culture. She was describing it was very, very heartwarming to see how Ramayan is such an integral part of the Vedic culture. And then she also one thing which I really liked in that class was she spoke about how Ram when we chant Ram. Uh, in the name of ram there is radha rani and krishna ra is for radhika and ma is madhusudana she was quoting jeev goswami so i felt very happy because when ram nomi is coming you know sometimes i feel little guilty because i like ramayan that time more than bhagavatam <laughs> <laughs> and then when janmashtami comes then again we are into bhagavatam and then when gaur purnima is coming then gaur leela is we forget other things so actually what triggered was yesterday's class i think uh, vrindavan chandra prabhu he, he gave class and he spoke about this theme of uh, dharma dharma sankat and lord ram feeling separation from other sita so i thought it's a good uh, topic to take so we see lord ram is crying and lamenting a lot not only in this verse you will see in aranyakan one of the most poignant sections of the ramayan is aranyakan when lord ram and sita lakshman are in the forest and chapters 58 to 78 they are like very intense there you will see the you know we say uh, Ra- lord ram is come as a human being right and is a perfect human being and you will see here he is confirming how he is a perfect human being because he is also perfectly vulnerable <laughs> and perfectly you know he just he just goes he goes mad in separation from other sita and he takes shelter of lakshman so i thought i'll share some of the verses i made notes on from this section the beautiful section a few years ago i was reading this so when we read this you know if we are not aware of how as propa writes in this purport this is not material this is spiritual we need to first understand this is transcendental lord crying is not like you know is actually in, almost in depression but lord never gets into depression that we should know hmm. so lord performed this past time for us to teach us how we should also hanker and we should be yearning to have that feelings of separation from the lord and come closer to the lord so so shrimad bhagavatam one devote is explaining teaches us how to leave the world essentially mahabharat teaches us how to live in this world and ramayan teaches us how to lead and what a leader's qualities are and here one of the amazing qualities of lord ram as a leader is is being 
authentic and vulnerable and willing to express his allow his emotions to come out and being honest and being very very uh, congruent so we'll see how lord ram responds to mother sita separation but he when i was reading this i was stunned to see that the verses reveal lord ram is displaying the same symptoms as a person who goes through depression uh, reveals like i was uh, many years ago i read this there the few things that happen when we get into depression when we go through some suffering we first go into denial we deny that we are suffering and we try to put up a positive front that is called toxic positivity it's not positive thinking it is just that we are trying to deny deny denial denial is the worst kind of lie because that is the lie we tell ourselves hmm. so then denial and then when we realize that denial is not working because that pain is real and i'm not able to suppress it so then denial transforms into bargain we start trying to get some some way out of this we try to do cut corner something we try to do get some solution bargaining also doesn't help then anger comes out we get frustrated we throw tantrums and even that doesn't help then we get into depression unless after these three stages there is very good association and in that association we come to the stage of acceptance and it is when there is acceptance that healing begins without acceptance we can't heal we can't simply heal ourselves by denying our suffering and misery and you will see lord ram again i'll repeat he is not human in the sense he is supreme lord but he is teaching us how we also may do the same thing we may deny our attachments our suffering our pain denial leads to the next is after denial bargain then anger and then if you have good association then acceptance otherwise depression like you know somebody is for, for example suffering from cancer so first we say no 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 i'll be all right this will get all right you know like that we keep doing positive thinking but then sometimes it's obvious that it is very last stage or it is very serious and then what we do we start instead of taking complete shelter of krishna we may think no let me bargain means let we go to different demigods or different tantric pujas and different we somehow try to salvage the situation that is called bargaining and then even that fails instead of accepting we may start getting angry frustrated <clears throat> and then finally even that is not solving the problem or a chain smoker for example somebody is into chain smoking he just can't give up smoking and he says he is in denial like i had a college friend he used to smoke 35 cigarettes a day and one day i told him why don't you give it up he said i can give it up any time it's easy it's easy for me then if i give it up now he said oh, i just don't feel like but when i want to i can give up that is classic example of denial and then bargain is when you're going through rehabilitation and you say uh, okay i'll take let me smoke five cigarettes or, or one cigarette just one 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 i just want one you know that desperation for getting some relief that is bargain and then even that doesn't work out then you get frustrated so like that and then depression happens if there is no proper acceptance that i am addicted accepting that i am going through the suffering and then we can offer our pain to krishna for healing acceptance is extremely important so lord ram is teaching us how to practice acceptance so we are entering the i am entering the 58th chapter now all of you know the background sita has been abducted by ravana that's another amazing past time in itself and <clears throat> Lord Ram he is there with whom when when Sita is abducted where is Lord Ram he is chasing the deer and Maricha has assumed his real form and he shouts Ram alas Lakshman and mother Sita starts you know that's a whole past time where mother Sita first initially urges Lakshman to go and find Lord Ram and then finally when Lakshman says this is not my lord and master Ram's voice Sita says can't you hear him he's crying he's crying for help and lakshman says a sentence which later completely proves wrong he tells mother sita no mother sita my lord lord ram never cries <laughs> little does he know that very soon a few chapters later we are going to witness one of the most intense crying 
ever exhibited in any incarnation by any lord of course lord chaitanya mahaprabhu but lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in the mood of a devotee is crying in separation from lord i don't think we have seen lord crying intensely in separation from a devotee <laughs> you know from his consort of course not a devotee but yeah so the you see lord ram's crying so that, that time sita gets angry with lakshman and she you know cast aspersions on on his character and then a lot of past times happens and now lakshman is very sad and he is on his way to meet lord ram and lord ram meanwhile hearing maricha scream realizes that this is a strategy of the rakshasas and then he comes running towards the hermitage because he knows sita's life might be in danger and as he is coming running he sees jackals on his left side which is a sign of inauspiciousness and then he sees lakshman and he holds lakshman and says lakshman what are you doing here and then lakshman reveals what happened and lord ram gets angry with lakshman who got angry with lakshman earlier mother sita scolded him and now lord ram is also scolding lakshman lakshman is not saying what is this you know you both husband and wife are chastising me <laughs> i will leave both of you and go and join some other institution <laughs> no he is accepting okay he is he is serving he is attached to lord ram service and mother sita but that's very interesting in the valmiki ramayan i was reading all these verses last two years ago when i was studying ramayan it is amazing is that lord ram is very upset angry with lakshman but he speaks gently and <laughs> the verse is he is very sensitive he says oh son of sumantra actually lord ram's sensitivity is another amazing subject you know we can you know when he is going towards uh, the forest sumantra is driving the chariot uh, sumantra is driving the chariot and lord ram is on the chariot and he sees all the brahmanas all the elderly people are walking with him so he feels sad and he also starts walking with them and then the devotees insist that he should be on the chariot and when he is on the chariot is not not very comfortable and dasharath maharaj kaushalya sumitra are behind and they are dasharath maharaj is shouting ram wait wait don't go and lord ram sees and he is feeling that pain and he tells sumantra drive fast and sumantra is a minister and he is hearing his king tell him go slow <laughs> and lord ram is saying go fast so he is confused and lord ram says no go fast and then he says but my king is ordering to go slow and lord ram param satyavan always speaks the truth he tells sumantra when you come back tell the king that you did not hear him <laughs> <laughs> and he orders him go fast so like that it's very very uh, ramayan has lot of uh, nectar anyway so now they, they come to the hermitage and lord ram is looking starts running everywhere it says sita sita he starts looking for sita everywhere and he realizes that one point of because the whole hermitage is you know the things are all scattered the flowers are fallen and it's like it's obvious that sita is not here but lord ram is desperately looking for signs that sita is here so in that desperation he starts first of all shouting sita sita and then when he realizes he starts crying but then he checks his tears now he enters the denial phase he said no 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 sita is here only she is here she is teasing me and then he starts very melodiously chanting sita's name sita sita he starts chanting her name and then he starts wailing suddenly he realizes and then again he comes back he's positive thinking no 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 she is here she is here so then then what he does then lord ram sits in a meditative pose and lakshman lakshman have already realized that mother sita has been kidnapped is obvious but he is not able to stop because lord ram is on is an emotional you know it's like is very emotional intensely emotional at this moment so lord ram tells lakshman lakshman sita is nearby she is teasing me because few days ago when i was doing meditation she came to me and with you know with an amorous pastime she was just coming to tease lord ram and lord ram pretended lord ram was little upset if i don't disturb me now so he is saying now she is taking revenge he is telling all this to lakshman and then lord ram puts in a meditative pose and then he starts looking from his the corner of his eyes sita is somewhere <laughs> and is looking and she finds sita is not here and lakshman is watching all of this and then he says and then ram starts smiling the verses describe ram is smiling and saying sita i'm sorry please come back and he is speaking very sweetly 
and then even then mother sita is nowhere it's increasingly getting obvious and then he opens his eyes now he should have at this point of time realized this lakshman have already realized but what lord ram does again denial no lakshman sita has gone to godavari to fetch water now interestingly sita never went alone to godavari to fetch water but lord ram is in denial so he is unable to see this let us wait she will come back lakshman why don't you go to godavari and call her fast i'm missing her i'm feeling separation from her now lakshman knows he will not find mother sita there but still he pretends to go he walks and he comes back and then when he comes back his head low lord ram realizes sita so basically denial is over now you can't you can't continue with denial then lord ram starts bargaining a series of in fact a whole chapter of bargaining <laughs> he starts telling oh ashoka tree oh kadamba tree oh and he starts mentioning all the names of all the trees please tell me where is my sita please bring her back he starts begging all the trees all the forest deities and then he says lakshman will kaike be very happy now no no she won't be happy i think she will be happy if i die no but will kaushalya be okay because i will die now and if i die then bharat will be king but if bharat will be king kk may not treat my mother kaushalya nicely so he starts thinking all of this so i hope mother kaushalya oh, but mother kk won't treat my mother kaushalya badly i know her i just hope she is happy so he starts thinking of others happiness now he is himself in distress and then he starts talking to imaginary sita he imagines sita is in front of him and he starts talking to her where are you where have you gone why don't you come back you are here and then he looks at the other direction and he feels sita is there because he sees a yellow flower he remembers sita's cloth which she was wearing or he sees some flowers he sees anything he sees a bark of a tree he remembers sita's different features when he sees things around him so like that and then he looks at a deer and then he says oh deer please tell me where is my wife all the animals birds trees is asking all of them and then it is lakshman see this deer is running alone i think he also has lost his wife like i have lost my wife for then uh, it's interesting as ram is crying also but he's putting up a brave front and lakshman had just told mother sita that ram will never cry and now he's seeing one of the most piteous wailing of lord ram hmm. so I, when i was reading this you know we say ram is the source of all happiness ravan literally means one who makes you cry <laughs> ram means happiness so if you read ram about ram will be happy and if you re- read about ram ram's crying then our crying will go away because this is this is very spiritual transcendental blissful i have seen many devotees have shared this even radhesham prabhu was once told me the temple president of pune that one of the biggest needs of devotees is how to fill the emotional vacuum in the heart you know we may practice we may have lot of practices rituals we may do lot of seva but somewhere we may feel emotionally not connected to the lord so he was saying that gaur leela especially chaitanya bhagavat and also the ante leela chaitanya charitamrit uh, and i also found it very very uh, logical and very convincing ramayan and gaur leela <clears throat> you will find they somewhere fill that emotional vacuum of course for advanced devotees even ras leela the bhagavatam gopi separation all of that is there but we we see a very human uh, kind of experience here in ramayan so like that so we need to somehow fill our heart with emotions for the lord and lord ram's crying is a very good example to just read that and being present it will invoke prayers in our heart because our problem is you know i say in india uh, in hindi I, i'll translate it into english we say i say that uh, ravan sabke man mein hai actually we are carrying ravan in our heart in the sense the desire to enjoy is very strong we need to invoke that connection with lord ram's past time and feel the emotions that lord ram is feeling and you know get into that space ravan sabke man mein hai ram abhi tak van mein hai <laughs> ravan is in everybody's heart and ram is still in the forest he is not come to my heart therefore we want to pray to the lord that you know i want to i want to cry in separation from you i want to i want to come closer to you 
Jai Sita Ram Rashman Anuman ki, Jai Radha Gokulanan Bhagavan ki, Jai. There is one very beautiful po poem, I don't remember that. It's a devotee of Lord Ram. He writes a very nice line. He says, every devotee has his favorite uh, uh, aspect of the Lord. He says, Krishna's devotees, there are Krishna's devotees who love Krishna in Vrindavan. There are some devotees who love Krishna in Mathura. Some say, I love Krishna of uh, Dwarka. Similarly, there are Lord Ram's devotees who say, I love Lord Ram of Chitrakoot. If you go to Ramanandi Sampradaya, they love Ram in Chitrakoot. There are people who say, I love Lord Ram of uh, Ayodhya. Some who love Lord Ram of Kishkinda. There is this poet who says, uh, my favorite is Ram of Lanka. <laughs> Why? Very interesting. He says, because my dear Lord Ram, all other places, Chitrakoot, Ayodhya, wherever you went, you were welcomed and you were invited. You were wanted there. Lanka was one place where you went uninvited. And my heart is also filled with so much of anartha, it is like Lanka. You are uninvited in my heart. <laughs> you are not wanted. So just like you force yourself and you entered Lanka without invitation. Similarly, I beg you, please enter, invade the fortress of my heart and enter like that. So, very beautiful section where Lord Ram uh, is crying in separation from Mother Sita. And it's interesting, you know, a few chapters before, when they were in Danda, of course, they were in Dandakaranya, uh, in the few chapters before Sita's abduction, one day when Sita and Ram were sitting comfortably, Mother Sita asks a very interesting question to Lord Ram. We find that conversation where she says, My dear Lord, what gives you greatest distress? When do you cry the most? And what gives you greatest happiness? And when she was asking this, Mother Sita was thinking that my Lord will tell me that my dear Sita, separation from you gives me the greatest distress. And when I am reunited with you, that gives me greatest happiness. She was expecting this answer. But the answer Lord Ram, Lord Ram gave made her even more, it was a different answer. But that made her even more happier. You know what the answer he gave? He said, when a devotee intensely cries in separation from me, and he desperately wants to be reunited with me, and he is crying in great pain, and he's suffering in the material world. And when I see his suffering and he's crying, that gives me great pain. And when I work to remove that distress, that gives me greatest happiness. So like that. <clears throat> so uh, in great lamentation, when I was reading this section, I remember feeling at one point of time, Lord Ram is crying so much, but when he lost the kingdom, like he was told, Mother Kaike told him, now you have to leave the forest. And how does Ramayana describe Ram's reaction? Equipoised. Not at all affected. I was thinking, how come Ram was totally equipoised then? And now he's crying like this. As if anticipating this question will come in our mind, Lord Ram reveals the reason to Lakshman. In the next few verses he says, Ra, Lakshman, you must be wondering why I am crying like this so much. And when I was banished to the forest by Mother Kaikeyi, I felt no remorse. I felt no sadness. Because in Ayodhya, till this point of time in my life, I have always equipoised because Sita was with me. Now I have lost her, so I have lost all equanimity. So like that. So, I'm just going a little fast forward. You know, sometimes devotees, what we do, you know, in our, uh, in our, in our uh, attempt to fix everything through our intellect, scriptures, we want to study scriptures intellectually, which is needed, we need to analyze scriptures also. But sometimes we have to keep intelligent, intellectual analysis aside and enter the emotions of the scriptures. That's very important. Because there are some people who say, mantra, shurpanka, they're not really villains, you know, they were sent by the demigods. And they quote verses also from Tulsi Ramayana and all that. And I say, yes, it's all correct. But we should as devotees see them as villains. <laughs> we sh yeah, they are, okay, they are arrangement of the Lord. And they are lots, inter you know, part, they are lots uh, associates. They are glorious. But no, we should be in the mood that, how could Mantra do this? You know, how could KK do this? Or could Surpanka do this? 
we can't call them as associates of the lord then we are not entering the spirit of the scripture like you know the broom you know we use a broom to clean the altar floor but we don't keep the broom in front of the lord in the altar the broom as a place right similarly mantra may be part of the lord's internal potency and all that but she has to be shown her place <laughs> she is the villain and there are some people you know very cheap i mean i i find i i want to share it here because you may come across such uh, intellectually stimulating versions of ramayan but they are all bogus stay away from them there is one ramayan you know where ravana is instructing lakshman just before dying and lakshman is humbly hearing and taking notes from ravan they are trying to prevent how ravana was very intelligent and very good all that may be true but we should not have that mood you know of course it's not true it's not there in ramayan anywhere but you know there are these people who want to discredit ramayan and create confusion in our minds they write like that there's also another place where another version where they write how ravan ram and sita all three of them ravan ram and sita all three of them performed shiva puja together you know what all of this does is it it actually um it destroys the emotional connect with ramayana and with the lord so therefore the vedic scriptures say that if we don't take milk properly if we don't know how to take milk properly from the cow's udders we'll get blood instead of milk so if you don't know how to approach scriptures properly uh, we will we will create havoc with, what is the rupa goswami's verse shuti smriti purana adi pancharatrikam vidim vina ayakanti ke harer bhaktir उत्पात एव कल्पते इफ यू डोंट फॉलो द प्रॉपर परंपरा ट्रेडिशंस बोनाफाइड स्क्रिप्चर्स देन उत्पात मींस इट विल क्रिएट कैओस इन द सोसाइटी दैट्स फॉर आई आई फाउंड वन वर्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग व्हेन जटायु इज कैस्टिगेटिंग रावण फॉर एब्डक्टिंग मदर सीता वन ऑफ द आर्ग्युमेंट्स ही गिव्स यू नो लाइक ही सेज मेनी एनालॉजीज ओ रावण यू सिनफुल रेच यू आर ट्राइंग यू आर टेकिंग सीता इज लाइक अ चाइल्ड ट्राइंग टू पुल द टीथ ऑफ अ पॉइजनस सर्पेंट सेकंड ही सेज यू आर ट्राइंग टू टेक सीता इज लाइक a uh, lame man trying to jump over a mountain or something like that. he gives many analogies and one of the analogies jatayu gives is you are taking sita he is like trying to change the conclusion of scriptures through logic that means <laughs> using logical analysis of scriptures is not always healthy hmm. so anyway but ram's crying is not a weakness as propa writes in today's purport also it is transcendental and it's coming from a space of love pure love and in his dharma manav dharma as a maryada purushottam it is coming from a space of responsibility and uh, you know he loves his wife and there is sensitivity also in his dealings so and if we allow these emotions to enter our heart then we can move from the i space to god space we can enter krishna space and that's why if you see in india from from childhood children you know we are we are taught how to represent ramayana through our different arts music dance drama ramayana is always presented like that so let's come back to the past time i'll just briefly uh, rush through this past time it's very sweet where lord ram is uh, expressed what was he has shown what sign denial then bargain So in the bargain, he starts uh, talking to the tigers, elephants. Please tell me where is Sita? Finally, Lord Ram again tells Lakshman, "Go to Godavari. She is certainly there." Now this is very interesting. Valmiki Muni explains in great detail Godavari's mistake. River Godavari is a person. You know that, like Emuna Devi is a person. Now there is an interesting section in the Ramayan where, see, Godavari could have, you know, Yamuna Devi, Ganga Devi, as a personified form. So Godavari could also have taken a personal form, and she could have told Ram that Ravana has kidnapped Sita. But Godavari did not appear in front of Ram because Valmiki says that Godavari Maya, she was terrified at Ravana's appearance some time ago. with the way ravana was screaming at sita who oh, proud lady look at my arms i can destroy i can kill death i can drink the ocean i can burn fire oh really thank you for this <laughs> where was i so ravana is like screaming and is telling i got a message you can go on for some more time so i don't have to rush so so ravana is like is uh, boasting about his prowess and sita is trembling so godavari saw this 
river godavari saw this so she is still remembering that form of ravan that fearful form so when lord ram is asking godavari maya oh godavari have you seen my wife sita godavari should have could have come in her personified form and she could have told him that ravana has taken but she did not come because she was afraid of ravana valmiki mun explains this in the ramayana can you see something similar happen in krishna lila where somebody could have served krishna but did not because of fear of akrura no wait no not the washerman somebody who wanted to serve krishna ah yeah washerman also yes no i am talking about somebody who is a devotee devotee but not but could not serve krishna ah uh, bishma also i am talking about the 10th canto <laughs> bhagavatam uh ah uh? okay which chapter okay well tell you okay i'll i'll give a hint there is somebody who was fearful of kamsa but understood that krishna is god and wanted to serve krishna but because of fear of kamsa did not go to serve krishna not kubja the brahmanas you know the wives of brahmanas who ran to krishna with all the offerings and when they came back the brahmanas start chastising themselves oh our wives are glorious you know then they start glorifying their wives in choice poetry and saying that you are so glorious we have we are so foolish we should have surrendered to krishna and all those prayers are there and then the next verse is but still they didn't go to <laughs> because they were afraid of kamsa so something similar here godavari knew that lord ram is supreme lord but she was afraid now the best part of this past time is godavari is a deity she is a river and she did not serve krishna the next verse describes lord ram looks at the deer there are four five deers running and they stop and lord ram looks at them they all look at lord ram they don't know the language all of them you know take their neck and they point towards the southern direction so then lord ram tells lakshman see lakshman all of them are pointing to south that means my sita has been taken to the southern direction so the, the deer they had limitation they didn't have the wherewithal the resources to help lord ram they were not like river godavari but still there is no ahetukya pratiyata ya atma suprapati save pumsam there is no limitation for serving krishna with all their limitations they were able to render service to lord ram and they were, they are the ones who should be most scared because maricha had come in a golden deer form and he started going around he started going with this deer you know but this deer realized that he, this is a different kind of deer because he was he, he was uh, uh he was he started suddenly developing maricha the ramayan described he started developing a desire to eat this deer because he is a rakshasa <laughs> and animals are very perceptive so they knew it's a deer but they knew it's a carnivorous deer <laughs> so the deer were scared of maricha then they saw ravana also so they had every reason to run away when they saw and you know deer i don't know many of you experience they are very very cowardly animals like if you go near them i have gone to this forest borivali national park in mumbai whenever i go there the, when i see the deer i want to go close, close, close to them they run away so they are very afraid of humans so the deer had every, the deer, this four five deer they had a reason to run away from that site but they thought let us serve lord ram so but it's interesting Godavari could not serve but the deer served and who learnt from this mistake of Godavari Maya which river learnt from this mistake of Godavari Maya Yamuna Devi next incarnation when lord came as Krishna and Vasudev had to carry Krishna from Mathura to Vrindavan what did Yamuna Devi do Shh. she cleared yeah she touched the feet and she made way for Vasudev to take Uh, krishna so like that and we know lord ram was helped by jatayu jatayu told lord ram where you know sita was taken but lord ram could meet jatayu in the first place because the deer helped them so then lord ram uh, runs towards the southern direction lakshman is running behind and there he sees this chariot broken chariot and then <clears throat> lord ram still in denial bargaining going on then he starts crying he says oh this is 
clear that two rakshasas have fought for my sita and one of them was killed and the other ate my sita he comes to this conclusion see his observation is right what is observing is right but his conclusion becomes wrong because he is emotionally affected see he is not able to conclude properly and ram is crying here we should remember we should not see ram's crying from uh, tattva point of view you can't ask logical questions on why ram did this or why ram said this we should see their rasa not tattva this is rasa here you know like there is uh, many times what happens people they they take out meanings from the rasa aspect and they give tattva from there <laughs> like there is uh, isolena shila jayadev swami maharaj was once telling us that uh, there was one big scholar of some academy some uh, you know religious scholar he is he calls lord chaitanya mahaprabhu as a chaitanya saint who suffered from epilepsy and he, the proof he gives is lord chaitanya when that pathan was uh, catching lord chaitanya and lord chaitanya you know he was chanting and dancing in ecstasy and that pathan was impressed So Lord Chaitanya did not want to show that he is God and he is getting all these ecstatic symptoms. So to downplay his emotional state, Lord Chaitanya told that Patan, actually I get epilepsy sometimes, so that the Patan doesn't take him seriously and leaves him alone. So then this scholar, what he does, he takes, he zooms into that verse <laughs> and says, "Say this verse proves that Chaitanya had epilepsy." You know, like that. So that's why we have to have scriptural, uh, we have to read scriptures from parampara only. Anyway, so. Lord <coughs> Ram is laughing, crying, is in denial, is in bargains. So I was thinking, why is Lakshman quiet all this while? Lakshman could have held Lord Ram and done something, right? So Valmiki Muni describes that Lakshman wanted to help Lord Ram, and he tried counselling Lord Ram. He said, "Oh, my dear brother, Mother Sita is safe." And then Ram Ram stopped. He heard Lakshman for a few few minutes, and then as if completely ignoring what Lakshman said. Lord Ram loudly screamed in pain. So all that Lakshman had said has gone down the drain. It didn't have any effect on Lord Ram. Seeing all of this, Lakshman became disheartened, and he was still now trying to put up a brave front, trying to console Lord Ram. Then he also sat down dejected. Then Ram tells Lakshman, "Lakshman, you go to Ayodhya. I will commit suicide. Assist Bharat." Now Lakshman's confidence goes further down. and he starts crying see till now lord ram knew subconsciously that lakshman is there to now when lakshman starts crying lord ram is uncontrollable and he starts wailing piteously and then lakshman realizes that i can't afford to <laughs> i can't afford to be like you know show my emotion so he gathers himself because he right now he has to serve the lord so what has happened denial bargain now lord ram explodes in anger he says people think i am very kind hearted and my kind hearted nature has been seen as a weakness today i will destroy the entire universe and he takes out his brahmastra and he puts it on his bow and he is about to release the arrow so he is about to become a victim of anger he wants to destroy the whole universe there is going to be universal dissolution at this point of time this is when lakshman does something amazing there are nine things there's a whole few chapters how lakshman counsels lord ram uh, so i have made some notes from that there are nine uh, counseling or mentoring lessons that ramayan teaches us through lakshman's counseling lord ram it's amazing so what has happened association see first was denial bargain anger now good association meaningful association as devotees when we have to preach when we have to help others we can remember these nine principles that lakshman followed when you know somebody who is in lot of pain and suffering we can follow this and each of this is amazing first few verses you know what lakshman does when when lord ram is about to shoot the arrow lakshman falls at lord ram's feet and grabs it and he shows utter humility this is the first thing he does you know he shows his position basically he convinces ram that i am your servant and i want to serve you he he proves basically He is established in this position of humility that I am servant of Lord Ram and I want to serve my Lord. Then second, he does is very good. He starts appreciating Lord Ram. Lord Ram is arrow is on the bow. He wants to destroy the universe. And Lakshman says, "Oh Ram, oh oh my dear brother, you are the most virtuous man in the creation. You are the most strong. You are the most uh, virtuous." And he starts glorifying different qualities of Lord Ram: his patience, his kind-heartedness. appreciation is good to hear right 
so lakshman first he does first he shows humility then appreciation then lord ram is little cool see when you are emotional na logical reasoning doesn't help immediately see sita was screaming at lakshman and she was in the space of concern and lakshman was in the space of confidence he had complete confidence in lord ram there was a conflict of uh, concern and confidence and lakshman is logically you know he's trying to convince her but then she got emotional so emotional versus logical logical loses <laughs> so lakshman has already realized that <laughs> So then, so here, what he is doing is also emotional. He is like touching the feet, he is grabbing, he is crying, showing humility, and now he is appreciating Lord Ram. After that, he gives logic. The third, third thing is logic. He sees, he, he points out to the same evidence which Ram has seen, the evidence of the chariot broken, the blood, which is basically Ravana killing Jatayu, uh, not Jatayu, uh, yeah, Jatayu. But then Jatayu is still elsewhere. Right now, the chariot is here. So they are only seeing the chariot and the broken things and the some uh, blood and all of that. So Lakshman also sees the same evidence and he logically explains to Lord Ram how you see you are right in the observation but your conclusion is wrong. There is only one set of footprints. So there are two rakshas have not have not fought for Sita. There is only one person and somebody has tried to help Mother Sita and that person is somewhere near either dead. So basically Lakshman gives very logical explanations to Ram but only after having emotionally placated him. after having uh, touched his feet massaged his feet and then having appreciated him and now he gives logic and then the fourth thing he does is amazing he approves of lord ram's anger he says you should be angry you should destroy the universe <laughs> nobody is helping you so again if you see there is emotion here he is basically empathizing and then he says very humbly and gently but for these two people who are fighting or few people one person who is kidnapped mother sita please don't be angry with the whole world and but but my dear lord if you don't get mother sita please do unleash your anger on the entire universe <laughs> so like that he approves of the lord's anger four right and the fifth is he again starts massaging the lord's feet again servant mood this is a there's a lot of verses there i am he massages lord's feet and then sixth thing he does is he reminds the lord of the duties he has to perform towards the living entities as a kshatriya he reminds the lord gently of his duties and after this six things what lakshman does is what we do generally the first thing okay but before i tell you what lakshman does <laughs> the seventh is a thing which we all do in our preaching but this is to be done after we have done the first six <laughs> what is the first he does he touches the lord's feet humility then uh, appreciation then uh, logical explanations then approves of the lord ram situation then massages the lord's feet basically servant mood and then sixth reminds him of his duties and the seventh thing lakshman does is shocking nowhere in ramayana you will find lakshman behaving like this with ram this is strong preaching lakshman is preaching so strongly you know what he tells lord ram so what if you have lost sita Why are you crying like an ordinary man? You have a responsibility for all living entities, and what is this suffering? Why are you getting so agitated because of your suffering? Everybody is suffering in this material world. So he starts saying how material world is dukkhale masashotam. <laughs> Strong preaching, and then Lakshman starts giving examples of suffering in the material world. He says, "You think you are the only one suffering?" don't you know how much ayati suffered and then he gives ayati story don't you know how much nausha suffered and vashishta he lost his 100 sons can your suffering be greater than his suffering does mother earth not suffer when there is earthquakes why why there are earthquakes on planet earth because she is suffering and surya dev when there is an eclipse he is suffering chandra dev is covered by rahu so he starts giving all the different examples of personalities who have suffered so generally this is the seventh thing he does the eighth thing eighth there are nine points i got out i got from this i derived but after this seven the eighth one was the one that i liked the most see when what happens generally when we are strongly preaching we sometimes get carried away by that passion and we think i am really good you know <laughs> i can i can instruct i can 
I can tell you what to do. I have a holier than thou attitude and like I am there. I know what is the pro- what is the problem with the world and I've come here to solve this. And he's like in full spirit chastising Lord Ram. And then the eighth thing is Lakshman reveals his own insignificant position. He says, "My dear Lord, I'm telling you all this. All this I've learned from you only." <laughs> he tells he is very very conscious of his humble position he doesn't get carried away so he has taken charge remember lakshman is in charge right now but he doesn't forget his position of being the servant of the lord and the ninth is very important call for action he tells lord ram that come on get up rise let us march and find sita let us follow this footprints for this expert counseling of lakshman helps lord ram then lord ram accepts that sita has been abducted that acceptance is now ram is ready and what is the proof that he has come to the stage of acceptance in a series of verses he tells lakshman lakshman i trust you you are my well wisher i surrender to you please tell me what to do please tell me where we should go now So Lakshman is junior. Lakshman is servant of Ram, but Ram is willing to take guidance, be subordinate to his junior. Can we take guidance when we are vulnerable, when we are weak, when we are devastated? Can we take shelter of other devotees? Can we? Are we willing to trust somebody else's intelligence more than ours when we are in pain, when we are disoriented? So like that. Um, we can't pretend to be uh, we can't lead, lead a life of pretension and you know it's interesting i was reading this i was saying krishna you know lakshmana's inst- the way he chastises lord ram it is like krishna chastising arjuna <laughs> you know what is that he says klebyam uh, asmagama partha where does his weakness come to you so i was thinking wow Krishna is chastising his servant here servant is chastising god <laughs> and lord ram is listening so that's why he's perfect human being he's willing to be vulnerable he's willing to take guidance and and he surrenders to lakshman's lakshman saves the day <laughs> so this is uh, i i want to pause here and maybe we can have some uh, discussion on this if we have a few minutes so to conclude we discussed um, about the fourth thing that happened when we before we get into dip, no, the depression first is denial uh, bargaining anger and if you have good association then we come to the stage of acceptance and that acceptance will help us then heal our problems if you see uh, uh, gautam buddha i would like to conclude with this he taught acceptance in a very sensitive and very uh, mature way to one lady who came to him her son had died untimely death and she was desperate to revive her son so she started wailing and beating her chest and she was uncontrollable she told buddha that please get my son back and buddha felt very interesting but yes i can bring him back to life very easy just get me little rice from a house which has not seen death so she just hears this get me some rice oh my son will come back to life but then he says he reminds her get me rice from a house which has not seen death so she she goes to one house she says please give me rice and then when when he gets when she gets the rice she says so you know how there has been no death no and that house owner says yes no death but 5 years ago my mother died oh there has been death then she goes to the next house so in every house somebody has died at some time so finally after many houses visit she realizes that death is inevitable and she begins to accept that her son has died so lord so buddha taught acceptance very compassionately so we need to practice acceptance but for that we need good association we need to trust some devotees at least one devotee we can't be vulnerable with everyone <laughs> that's not the point and even in this world i'm sure you must have realized that you know we can't have intimate relationship with any human being we can't have in- intimate relationship with any person <laughs> unless that person has access to some information about you which he can potentially use to destroy you 
<laughs> you should not destroy you, but what I'm saying is, I should, if I'm vulnerable means, I need, if I want to have an intimate relationship with someone, then I need to be willing to share something of me by which he can, I can be destroyed. <laughs> so that's difficult, I know. That's why I said we can't be vulnerable with everyone. But acceptance is very, it's very healing. So Lord Ram is teaching this through this pastime. Hare Krishna. Sita Ram Lashman Anuman Ki Jai. Any comments or corrections or questions? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much for a beautiful class, Prajwari Guru. Um, I was just wondering about separation and how it seems that Separation has two aspects. One is one's intense longing and attraction for Krishna and wanting to be with Krishna or Ram. And the other aspect is one's kind of disgust and detachment from the world and you know, not wanting to be here and feeling I'm caught here and why am I not there. So I just wondered if you could say something about this because it seems like uh, both elements are required to yeah. really long, like even in Shikshashtakam, like yeah. I've fallen in this ocean of birth and yeah. death, please pick me up. But then at the same time it seems that real separation is based on being attracted. Yeah. to Krishna. <coughs> so like even in the Bhagavatam we read that detachment is necessary but too much detachment is not good also. So mm. can you just say like what role disgust, detachment, depression, dejection with the world, what role does that play in actually developing real s mood of separation? Mm. Beautiful question Maharaj. <coughs> I'll share my candid thoughts on this. Actually, renunciation, you know, wanting to be away from this material world because we suffer, we go through suffering, all of us. Because our Kripa Mahaprabhu was telling me a few days ago that we expect to get, uh, you know, jalebi, samosas, and gulab jamun, but the world gives us simple porridge. So, <laughs> so, so we we go through suffering mainly because of our expectations, and you know, uh, and then we, and at that time, at least when we turn to Krishna. That is great, but the problem is uh, that wanting to run away from the material world can make us hard-hearted. And we may not really, it may not be positive, as you rightly said. Separation is actually wanting, wanting to, you know, when we are attracted to Krishna, that's the ideal. But to begin with, let our suffering get us to Krishna. I think you mentioned it in your, uh, that suffering is, what is that phrase you use in one of the books I read? Suffering is the beginning of enquiry? What is that? What is that? I, I also forgot. <laughs> but something to the effect that suffering is the beginning of enquiry. So when we go through suffering and we come to Krishna, it's like, it's like you know, I was saying yesterday evening, we are, we are fallen in a well and Krishna has thrown the rope from above. Prabhupada has thrown the rope. Come, come, come. And we are like, why should I go up? I am comfortable in the well. So we need to be stung by the bees and snakes and all that in the well. And we, we, so we need a kick from below and we also need to be pulled from above. If you're not attracted by the pulling of Krishna, Krishna's attractive features, then we need to go through suffering. <laughs> At least that Krishna, I don't want this, Krishna, I want you. <laughs> that is okay. But long run, yes, we need to be attracted to Krishna, Krishna's beautiful qualities. But the, this is a beginning step. But we should not stop there. And I personally, this is my understanding, it is better to be attached in the material world and come in front of Krishna and express our pain and suffering that because the attachment is causing. If there is a drop of tear, like Dhruva also went to Krishna with, he, was, he wanted a kingdom, right? Greater than his great grand. He was attached, he was desperately wanted. So that attachment, if you have a drop of tear in your eye when you're crying to Krishna, Krishna, I have the attachment, I accept this, please help me. So there, because we are offering our emotions to Krishna, Krishna purifies. Krishna purifies because uh, Krishna is all attractive. We need to trust Krishna to pull our hearts. 
because otherwise we may artificially give up our responsibilities or things that really help us or keep us happy in material world so there are, I, i'll tell you a classic example this is a true story i want to i want to say this story i was once giving a class i went to a program the small group 15 20 people and the host he told me he had called me to his family he said all our family members will be there you give bhagavatam class so i went and i said what should i speak and he told me prabhu speak heavy stuff <laughs> I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You speak strong Bhagavatam." So I said, "Okay." He's asked for it. So, <laughs> so I opened uh, Pralat's prayers and you know instruction to his you know that verses, "Katham Priyaya Anukampita," where Pralat is describing how the man and woman get attached to each other and how they get entangled by sex life and then how they all the details, graphic details. There are three verses which speak about how the fall down happens and how a man gets uh, you know. trap like a spider gets trapped all that i spoke in detail word to word explanation i was in my own world i was in my elements i was happy <laughs> so after the class any questions so an elderly lady she was sitting behind in the chair she raised her hand and the next 5 minutes what she spoke was so intense she said prabhu ji i think i'm going to suffer eternally in this material world because i'm so attached to material life and as she was saying it she had tears in her eyes and then i said can you elaborate what are your attachments she said i am so attached to my grandchildren i can't live a day without them and then she started crying but it's all material prabhu ji i there is no krishna i said what do you mean how many grandchildren do you have she had 11 grandchildren because she had i think four daughters you know two sons like that so she's talking about all her grand i said tell us more tell us more then she said oh, she started telling the names of all her grandchildren and then i said okay you are attached to them and she says every day i have to spend at, i spend at least 3 4 hours with my grandchildren on zoom call or I, if she's at one of the children's houses she is playing with the children and the age group is from 17 to 3 or something and she started she was as she was explaining it i could see she was in her element you know she was like she was blissful talking about her grandchildren and at the same time because of hearing that strong bhagavatam she is now feeling that inadequacy she is feeling she is fallen and like she is going on and on and she, i could see the paradox i could see both emotions coming out and i'm i'm looking at her intensely and she is like going on and prabhu ji but i'm so far away from krishna <laughs> she is crying and then i said okay you said about uh, maithili what what about her she is how, how, how many years old and then she is telling oh maithili you know i love to tell her krishna stories and this and that so she is talking about all her grandchildren and after she and, and, and at a at certain point of time she was like done I said, Mother, you, you said you play with your grandchildren. You are so happy with your grandchildren, and you are attached to them. What do you do with them? Do you discuss? Uh, what do you discuss, or what do you talk with them? She said, I talk everything. I talk to them about Ramayana, about Mahabharat, about the, what they love. I give them nice prasad, and all that she was saying. And after she finished, Krishna inspired me to tell this to her. I told her, Mother, you know, you have to do two things in life. what you were telling just now that, that you have you have fallen you are so far away from krishna you are so attached just continue this continue speaking like this continue feeling like this but don't stop doing what you are doing for your grandchildren <laughs> <laughs> don't stop even one bit just do that but that that is why we need bhagavatam we need scriptures because scriptures they you know get us on the right track but that doesn't mean we'll give up everything abruptly that's a danger that's why we for so then i was telling mataji your attachment to your grandchildren is very healthy because when your grandchildren this 11 of them when they are my age 50 they will remember you with deep gratitude because i grew up with my grandparents first 10 years of my life so i know what it is to get love of grandparents the grandparents love you more than your parents <laughs> right and i, I still remember as a 3 4 year old boy one day holding my grandfather and sleeping the next morning next day sleeping with my grandmother so i somewhere feel that because of that intense affection and love i have not gone crazy now <laughs> <laughs> i'm mentally sane because my grandparents gave me a lot of hugs kisses love <sighs> okay so that needs needed so i told this mataji that don't stop any bit of what you are doing but continue to feel this your you are away from krishna you are suffering and you know you are attached so somewhere krishna will organically and seamlessly bring you to that stage where you will you will give up this world with 
you know i like one of the mataji in our congregation when she left her body it was a classic departure you know she has five six grandchildren she is a counselor her children are devotees and when she is dying like guru maharaj came to her few days ago and before that we met her and then she is talking and then suddenly at one point of time she realized she is living she is telling her son oh get me beat back she is gasping for breath she has a beat back and she is looking at all her sons grandchildren everybody is there be happy okay all of you be happy i think i have to go now <sighs> krishna and then she left <laughs> it's like big sanyasis and you know gurus and you know big leaders and kings and emperors may not get this kind of departure <laughs> she is like fully krishna conscious and if you see her life life was so called attached life in the sense but she gave krishna in her own in her own situation she was attached to krishna and we have to encourage i think as a community we should encourage our devotees to develop this kind of natural renunciation this is organic what we did you know unfortunately for me keshav maharaj was interested in bhagavad gita he was reading bhagavad gita when he was 15 i was i came at a very you know when i was 25 for many of us renunciation was like a knee jerk reaction <laughs> you know just but in 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 reality renunciation is very seamless it's like sunrise and sunset you how see you see sunset in nature how, how does it happen that is rhythm there is beauty there is harmony in nature right that's how renunciation happens but for us what has happened because of strong preaching and all that it's like switch on switch off button if it is if it is pitch dark if it is pitch dark and you want light what do you do light comes but in nature light doesn't come like that how do you become old is it that one morning you get up and suddenly you become old slowly you start right slowly you start realizing you are getting old in india as children we used to call all elderly people as uncle 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 so as a as, you know when playing cricket if the ball went to some elderly person i would say uncle ball please give me the ball so few years ago i was walking for some program and some children were playing cricket and the ball came to me i picked up the ball and i suddenly heard children say uncle uncle please give the ball <laughs> i said what happened did i become an uncle when did i become an uncle <laughs> when did this happen <laughs> when was that that is seamlessly it happened you know slowly it happened that's how renunciation happens so i was telling this mataji that you will you will be renounced from this material world you will just keep hankering for krishna just be where you are and just keep reading bhagavatam read the strong sections of bhagavatam but don't change your situation krishna will pull you out of it i don't know maharaj i went off on and here and there <laughs> i don't know should we stop here or take one i'll take one more question krishna saka okay oh, mataji yes please thank you somebody will have to tell me uh, when to stop we'll take a call on that so the last question we'll take yeah okay hey krishna thank Arik. you so much for this class it was so nectarian i really enjoyed it um just like on this point um detachment without attachment to krishna is dangerous detachment Leaving without attachment to krishna, to krishna is dangerous yeah um because in the same um i was just reading in bhagavad gita that detachment from material life is the same as attachment to krishna um something along those lines um but yeah detachment without attachment to krishna leads to heart heartedness and then impersonalism in our inter- um interactions yeah. and then awkwardness um so it's better to be you're saying it's better to be attached and then speak about it to krishna to krishna and often i didn't say, uh, it's not good to be attached but attached and come to krishna mm. rather than be detached and be away from krishna mm. and then offer him our feelings offer him whatever we are suffering take it offer it to krishna for healing yeah and then krishna will purify our attachments so my question is how can we stay soft hearted in our attachments um yeah that's a good um, question avoid overprotecting our hearts uh, yeah. especially you know when we hear about shila purapa describing household life as the dark a dark well um how can we uh, keep can, how can we give up overprotecting yeah <clears throat> um because i i think i struggle with keeping my heart soft when dealing with attachments uh, actually day before yesterday lila shakti mata ji kind of answered this when she said you know uh, answer to that question she was saying about how we need to hear prabhupas classes every day so the magic of uh, hearing is 
especially bhagavatam study is that bhagavatam if you see as two things bhagavatam is not only talking about household life being a dark well <laughs> bhagavatam describes krishna's beauty in such poetic detail krishna's smile there's so much of beauty beauty and there's so much of love is also revealed in bhagavatam so we need to balance see propada has given us a perfect package of krishna consciousness there are many organizations in india is a land of two things spirituality in india is generally two things sahajya or mayavad mayavad is renounce 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 material world is a dark well of suffering renounce that is mayavad sahajya is oh krishna is so nice i love krishna i am a gopi <laughs> you know that is sahajya so india is a sahajya loka and mayavad loka very very prevalent these two extremes look at propas genius and bhagavat actually that is bhagavatam bhagavatam gives us everything about krishna details of krishna's smile krishna's laughter the signs on krishna's lotus feet everything is there how krishna is twirling a lotus flower shamam hiranya paridim vanamalya barha datu pravala natavesh manu vratam se विन्यस्त हस्त इतरे न दुना न मब्जम करुणोत्पलालक कपोल मुखाब्जहा कृष्ण हाउ इज ट्वेलिंग द लोटस फ्लॉर हाउ इज विद इज आईज यू नो इज लुकिंग एट द गोपीज इज ऑल्सो कंपोजिंग पोएट्री एंड ऑल दैट ग्रेसफुलनेस ऑफ कृष्णा इज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन सच अमेजिंग डिटेल दैट यूर हार्ट विल बी कंप्लीटली सैटिस्फाइड एंड जस्ट वेन यू थिंक वाव आई लव कृष्णा एंड देन जस्ट द डेंजर इज यू मे बिकम अ सहजिया and that just then you will see sukhdev go some say so you pig rascal dog <laughs> you are attached oh shwabid vara hustra kare oh okay 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 so you are smashed you are brought down and then when you hear all that you are fallen you are a dog you are useless your sense gate fire in a dark way you feel depressed then you hear about krishna's beauty how oh, krishna is so loving krishna is great krishna is sweet oh, you feel, you feel loved by krishna See our our Bhagavatam is the best. Bhagavatam comforts the afflicted, and afflicts the comforted. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are very comfortable, Bhagavatam will smash you. And if you are already smashed, sad, then Bhagavatam will reveal. Is that okay? Actually, I just want to end with this. See, the, you know how Shukdev Goswami got attracted to Krishna. He was impersonalist initially. but there are two verses we have to send his disciples and he said okay you chant these two verses and when sukhdev goswami heard these two verses he was completely at and what is the first first verse is krishna's beauty when he is coming back to barha pidam verse right barha pidam natavara vapu karnayo karnikal all the details of how krishna is dressed how krishna is walking how he is entering vrindavan from the forest so sukhdev goswami hears this he says wow krishna is so beautiful krishna is so attractive is completely is all impersonal conception goes away and he gets attached to krishna but the game changer the real deal was the next verse where the first was krishna's beauty so he is completely attached to krishna but the next verse was what anybody knows aho bakiyam stana kala kutam this is the verse where uh, what is the last line कम वा दयालु शरण व्रजे माउ कृष्णा डिलीवर्ड पूतना वो हैड कम टू किल हिम सो कृष्णा सक्ट द पॉइजन फ्रॉम अर ब्रेस्ट एंड सक्ट अर लाइफ फोर्स एंड गेव अर द पोजिशन ऑफ अ नर्स सो वेन सुखदेव गोसा मे हर्ट दिस ही सर हो कृष्णा इज नॉट जस्ट अट्रैक्टिव ही इज ऑल्सो कंपैशनेट दिस कंपैशन इज वॉट कंपैशन ऑफ कृष्णा इज वॉट मेड सुखदेव गोसा मे कंप्लीटली अटैच टू कृष्ण see we also you know we may be attracted by somebody who is very beautiful very attractive in this world right but that attraction and beauty is useless when we are suffering <laughs> like you know like imagine you are in the kitchen mass cooking festival cooking and uh, and and you are cooking and you get some dal falls on your hand and you is burning ah and you are screaming ah and then some beautiful person comes and smiles at you hare krishna <laughs> and you are like ah, okay but <laughs> right 
so so we are all like that we are in the kitchen of this material world where there is fire all around us we are burning some of us have got scars which will haunt us for the rest of our life <laughs> so we are burn so we need so krishna is out you know krishna is like somebody who comes to the kitchen he is very beautiful also but we are not attracted by his beauty initially when he comes to us he has this burn all in his hand he has <laughs> he has this medicine in his hand so we see that ah oh, yes yes and then as you are getting healed yeah krishna is beautiful also <laughs> krishna you are so beautiful krishna you are so nice but that comes from a space of somebody healing me so so i think that's the beauty of krishna you know he is beautiful all attractive but is also very compassionate that's how sukhdev goswami got attracted he sees krishna is all attractive but is very compassionate so when we are going through suffering because of our attachments we can turn to krishna and see krishna's compassionate side and that compassionate side of krishna will fill our heart with emotional remembrance of krishna unfortunately most of us in this bhakti practice have intellectual remembrance of krishna we are we have fallen in love with krishna's bio data krishna was born krishna was born in uh, mathura he went to vrindavan and then he came back at the age of 9 then he went with the uh, ekil jarasandha jarasandha attacked 17 times so krishna's bio data is quite long <laughs> and we have fallen in love with that bio data and we are we can rattle off all the things krishna has four kinds of flutes and you know each, each flute has how many holes this is very important please trust me you know re- hearing and reading about krishna is very important because it purifies the heart but emotional remembrance of krishna comes when we add when we have some attachments and that is what will help us remember krishna at the time of death that will that is what will help us tell krishna krishna i'm willing to go through the suffering again and again because what krishna gives us when we remember him is unmatchable seen world war they did some survey after the world war second world war what is the thing that people remember the most when they were dying what did they what did they remember the most or what did they say out scream out loud when they were dying and 90% of the people the soldiers who died even civilians who died in the world war their last thing they said was they called out to their mother mummy ma ma you know like that now did they did it, did they have to intellectually remember the mother it was spontaneous right you don't need you don't need training to remember your mother because there is emotions involved so our goal in bhakti is to remember krishna the way we remember our mother so in one uh, memorial service in our community one mata ji who had passed away we every devotee was speaking their realizations glorification so finally the sons began to speak the son said first he started giving bio data my son my, he said my mother was born in this village and she got married at the age of 14 and then she came to mumbai with my father and her favorite this was you know she started telling initially about all the favorite things of her his mother and offering was going on and at some point of time he entered the phase of how his mother sacrificed so much for them how his mother did this and how she went without food for many days for that in all that so then we could see that from biodata he was entering the space of emotions how his mother helped him out and then his eyes became moist and then he broke down you see what happened from intellectual uh, remembrance it was emotional remembrance so when we go through suffering if we can emotionally connect with krishna then that is worth it we stop here bro maharaj yeah thank you so much i please forgive me if i spoke anything beyond my level of realization but i am very grateful to all of you at the bhakti nath manor as i said last evening i just want to end with this i've been coming here for 20 years and the community here has shaped me has helped me two things i've got immensely from all the devotees here one is lot of encouragement and love and also timely guidance and feedback and i'm eternally grateful to all of you for this and thank you for accepting me as a part of your community shila prabhupad ki jai hare krishna
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे